Hello, this is David Velasquez, the Broker Boss. Welcome to the channel. Um, welcome back for those that have returned. Today, what we're going to be going over is your rental properties. Should you increase the rent or should you leave it the same? So what I want to go over is determine when, when you're going to raise rent, if you're going to raise rent. Okay, some things to take into account as how long has the tenant been there? Okay, has the tenant been troubled? Are they good tenants? Do they pay on time? What does the market look like? Okay, if you had that tenant move, how much is it going to cost you to get somebody else in there? Could you rent it for more? And how long would it take? If you're, you know, uh, if you're only making three or four hundred dollars a month on rent, and it's a twelve hundred a month pro uh, a month property, if you lose a whole month of vacancy, you really just cost yourself a full your year's profit on that particular property. So you want to be priced competitively. You want to have it, but you don't want it to sit vacant, and you want to uh, get as much as possible. So one thing that I take, like I said, I take into account, have they been difficult? Do they pay on time? Tenants, just this is a word of advice for tenants. It makes a difference to landlords. Okay. I don't, uh, if you're a bit, if I have to chase you down for rents all the time, I'm comfortable with raising rent. And a lot of times you'll see landlords raise rent and, and I'll do it to get you out of the property. Okay. Um, I know some tenants, think that uh, we, we absolutely want them to stay in the property. If you're a slack tenant or a turd, I want you out of the property. So what I'll do is I'll keep raising rent until you leave or I'll get a lot of money out of you. Okay, so um, so take good care of the property, keep it clean, keep it neat and pay rent on time. Um, and so that's one of the things that I take into account. The other thing is how long have they been there? If someone's been there for a long time, uh, Overall, I usually try to increment, incrementally raise rates because if you don't raise rates and you keep it a long time and then all of a sudden you want to try to jump from uh, 1300 to 1700 or have a $400 a month rent increase, you're going to scare that tenant that's going to leave. So it's better if you raised it even if you did $25, okay, so that over the three or four years, it, it's not as a significant a bump for the tenant and you also don't have something uh, where it scares them and they can't pay it uh, and it seems punitive. Uh, again, unless they're a turd. Um, so that's one thing that I do. Another trick that I've learned is say you want to uh, get a, a $50 a month rent increase. One thing you can do is go and tell them you're going to raise the rent $100. Okay, this is a point that I picked up in the book. Okay, a lot, some tenants will just be like, okay, fine. And you can get the reaction from them to see if they're okay. And then the ones that protest it or act upset go, you know what? Because you're such a good tenant, I'll just let's just do 50. And so it's the law of reciprocity. You give something and then you concede. It, it almost obligates them to concede. So if you just came to them and said to 50 bucks, they're going to protest that. And some of your tenants are going to protest anything you do anyway. They're just that that's who they are. So if you say 50 and they throw a fit and you just stay at 50, then they're upset with you. But if you said, OK, you want 50, I'm going to do 100 and then. uh back it off and concede 50 to them. A lot of times they're happy that it shows that you're appreciative of them. They feel appreciated and they're much happier with that. So that's one of the tricks um, that I've learned. Uh, also, like I said, how long has it been since there's been a rental increase? I find a lot of real estate investors, they get into real estate and they don't make any money. And the reason is, is they don't ever raise rents. And you can make money doing that because the real estate appreciates uh, and you continue to grow your equity. But we want to increase the cash flow and we want to maximize profits. It is an investment. Uh, but there's the human element of that also. If they're good tenants and they pay on time, they take good care of the property. It's well worth not raising it 50 or $100 or whatever you can get out of it uh, to keep that good tenant. And one thing that I, I'm pretty proud of, I don't have any vacant properties. And a lot of my tenants have been there for a long time. And so I try to work with them. And the other thing is how fast you fix things. So those tenants that are good, that do pay on time and take good care of, you want to try to get things fixed quickly and get things fixed for them. Otherwise, they'll leave and you'll get the people that are late on the rent, don't take care of the property because again, you're not a good landlord. And, and I, this kind of rolls into uh, the difference I see between tenants and property owners. Tenants, it seems like I'll have an advantage of a lot of properties. It, it seems like the owner will come in there and see it afterwards and myself and they're like, man, who does this to a property? How do they do this? And it seems like a lot of tenants, especially if they're 
older and they've rented their whole life, they look at it as they're not going to take care of it. They're not going to improve it. And for your younger renters, I would encourage you to take care of the property. Like when I was a renter, we redug up the whole yard. We planted a flower bed. Uh, we took good care of it. And, and what happens is you start to learn what it takes to take care of a property so that when you do own a property and you have that, you understand what the maintenance is required. You understand how to do it, And you continually improve things. A lot of times tenants, I think, look at property as it's kind of disposable and they don't want to take care of it. Well, at the end of that time, they leave and, the, and, and they haven't created any value. But if you continue to improve the property, whether you own it or not, you create value. And if you do that over a longer period of time, that in itself is going to create wealth. And that's going to help you when you own a property to already be, have that uh, that mentality and continue to improve it and fix things and work on stuff and, and help your property to uh, grow in value. All right. Also, I wanted to thank you for stopping by the channel. I uh, appreciate it. If there's anything that you're interested in or any questions that you have, put in the comments and I'll get that answered for you. Thanks again and see you next time.